We're now going to look at circular motion. In circular motion, the kinematic equations do not apply because we've got the acceleration changing all the time. And kinematic equations only apply in the case of constant acceleration. So anything which is moving in a circle can be described by circular motion. So for example, this whirly gig, which we'll look at in a bit more detail later, moves in a circle, and so it's undergoing circular motion. Satellites orbiting the Earth, and another example of something which is undergoing circular motion. So we'll start by considering the case of uniform circular motion. So this is when something is traveling with a constant speed around a circle, like you can see here. Now, in this case, the velocity is always changing. This is because the velocity is always in a tangent to the circle, and the direction that the object is moving is always changing, even though its speed remains constant. So if we want to work out the speed of the object, we can just use our equation that the speed is equal to the distance over the time. So for our case with the uniform circular motion, this is equal to 2 pi r, which is the circumference of a circle, divided by capital T, which is the period, the time it takes for the dot to travel once around the circle, or whichever object we're considering. So let's consider the acceleration of an object which is undergoing uniform circular motion. Let's start by considering the dot when it's at two different locations on the circle. Let's say at time t1, it has a velocity v1 as shown, and then at time 2, a short time later, it's got velocity v2 in the directions shown, and we can say that the angle between these two points subtended at the centre of the circle is equal to theta. Okay, now to calculate the average acceleration between times t1 and t2, we need to use our formula that the acceleration is equal to v2 minus v1 over t2 minus t1. But these are vectors. So for now, let's just consider the direction. So we can draw our vector v2 like this, and then we subtract off v1, and this will be equal to the acceleration times t2 plus t1. So it'll give us the direction of the acceleration. Now when we subtract vectors, we can just flip them over and add them. So we're effectively saying this vector plus this vector so now we can add these vectors head to tail like this, and hopefully you can see that the direction of that vector is back towards the center of the circle. Now to see that the acceleration is always directed towards the center of the circle, let's make T2 very similar to T1. So let's call T2 T1 plus delta T, where delta T is a small time. So now we've got a very, very small angle subtended at the center of the circle. In this case, when we do the same thing with the vectors, subtract them from each other, so flip the v1 and add it to v2, you can see that the acceleration vector is still directed towards the center of the circle. So this is actually always true for circular motion. Whenever anything's traveling in circular motion, the acceleration is directed towards the center of the circle. So let's now go and derive an expression for the magnitude of this acceleration vector. Okay, so we're going to derive the important equations for circular motion now. So what we have is an object traveling around a circle like this. So this is point R, here we've got this is at R, this is at minus R, this is at minus R, where R stands for the radius. This is the x-axis, which is represented by the i-unit vector. And this is the y-axis, which is represented by the j-unit vector. We'll start with our object here. So it's here at t equals 0. And then at some time later, it's traveled up to this point. And let's call this angle in here theta. Now, we know that speed is equal to distance over time. Now for 
angular quantities, we've got a similar expression, omega, this is the angular speed, is equal to the angle through which it's traveled over time. So with our velocity or speed equation, the speed is ds dt. And likewise, with the angular speed, this is given by d theta dt. So it's just how quickly that angle is changing. So what we're going to do now is come up with an expression relating omega, theta, and t. We know that for distance, we've got a similar equation. We can say that the distance traveled is equal to the velocity times the time. With this equation, we've got omega is equal to d theta dt. Let's let theta equal 0 at t equals 0. So that's what we've drawn here. Initially, at t equals 0, the dot has an angle of 0. And then sometime later, at t equals t, it's at an angle theta. So at t equals t, theta is equal to theta. So let's drive our expression. We can rearrange this. So we've got omega dt is equal to d theta. Then we just want to integrate this at time 0, the angle is 0. At time t, the angle is theta. So now integrating, we've got omega t from 0 to t. And we've got this is equal to theta from 0 to theta. So you can see omega t is equal to theta. Now, what we're going to want to do is come up with a relationship between omega, the angular speed, and v, the linear speed. So in order to do that, we're going to need to consider the circle a bit. And the arc length along here, this length, s, is equal to r theta. That's because the arc length of a circle is just equal to the radius times the angle subtended, where this angle has to be in radians. So the circumference of a circle, for example, is 2 pi r, because for the circumference, we're extending this entire angle around here. So for the circumference, theta is equal to 2 pi. And so this tells us that the arc length s is equal to 2 pi r, which is what you know the equation for the circumference of a circle is. So this arc length in this case is equal to r theta. Okay, so now to combine them, we're going to start with this v is equal to ds dt equation. So we've got v is equal to ds dt. s is the distance it's traveled. So this is equal to r theta. So this is r theta dt. Now, as the particle's moving, the radius of the circle it's moving around is not changing. So the radius is constant. So when we differentiate that with respect to time, it's just a constant. So it's a number out the front, and then we've got d theta dt. But we know that d theta dt is equal to omega. That's what we've written just up above here. And so we have this is equal to r omega. So v equals r omega is an important equation for circular motion for relating the speed to the angular speed. Now eventually we're going to want to come up with an expression for the acceleration of our particle which is undergoing uniform circular motion. So to do that let's look up here. We've got a y coordinate here and an x coordinate here. And we can write down an expression to describe the displacement of the particle. Now, x, hopefully you can see this is theta. This length along here is the radius. So we've got x is equal to r cos theta. That's just using cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And y is going to be equal to r sine theta. So to write out our location of s in unit vector notation, we've got r cos theta i plus r sine theta j. So that describes the location of this dot. Now, theta is changing with time. We've said omega t is equal to theta. So we can write this out as r cos theta 
omega t i plus r sine omega t j. So we now know where our dot is located at each point in time. Now to get the velocity, we'll need to do ds dt. And so we need to differentiate this expression with respect to time. Now, as we've said, r is not changing, the radius is not changing. So when we differentiate that with time, it's just a constant. So we just have to differentiate the cos omega t term. So we've got r, r. Now, when we differentiate cos omega t, out the front, we have to write the derivative of omega t with respect to time, which is omega. And then when we differentiate cos, we end up with minus sine. So we've got minus sine omega t i. And then we're going to differentiate the next component. We've still got the r. When we differentiate the omega t, we get omega. And then when we differentiate sine, we get cos. So this is cos omega t j. So this expression gives us the velocity. It's a vector expression. Let's convert it into a speed because we have already shown the speed up here in this purple box, but let's just confirm that we can get the speed this way as well. So with the velocity to get the speed, we need to add these head to tail. So in the x direction, we've got minus r omega sine omega t. And in the y direction, up like this, we've got the r omega cos omega t. So to get the speed, we need to get this hypotenuse. So this is equal to the square root of r squared omega squared cos squared omega t plus r squared omega squared sine omega t sine squared omega t. Okay, now r squared omega squared, that's a common factor. So we can pull that out the front and then we can pull it out the front of the square root sign by taking the square root. So we've got r omega times the square root of cos squared omega t plus sine squared omega t. And now we can employ an important trigonometry rule that tells us that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is always equal to 1. So because omega t is the same here and here, when we take the, when we add cos squared omega t plus sine squared omega t, we get 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. So this is equal to r omega. So we've now got that the magnitude of the velocity, which is the speed, is equal to r omega, which is what we had up here in this purple box. So this way is giving us the same results, which is good. Okay, now why we were doing this was to try and get an expression for the acceleration. So let's keep going. The acceleration is equal to dv dt. So we now need to differentiate our expression for v with respect to t. So r omega, those are not dependent on t. So we just end up with minus r omega again. Then we differentiate sine omega t. We need to differentiate omega t first, and that gives us omega. So we have an extra omega, so we're making that omega squared. And then when we differentiate sine, we end up with cos. So this is cos omega t i. And now we've got the r omega again. Differentiate the omega t here, and we end up with omega squared. And then when we differentiate cos, we get sine. So this is sine omega t, and then because when we differentiate, we end up with a negative sign, and this is in the j direction. Okay, now what we can do is notice that we've got r cos omega t, and we've got r sine omega t, and looking up here, r cos omega t i plus r sine omega t j is just equal to s. So we can write this as minus omega squared s. Pulling the omega squared out is a common factor and realizing that the rest is just the same as this expression. So what this negative sign tells us is that the acceleration is always in the opposite direction to s. So s always points from the center of the circle out along the radius to where the point is. And so this is telling us that the acceleration is always pointing back towards the center of the circle, which is what we argued before. So this tells us acceleration A is towards the center. But let's now come up with an expression for the magnitude of the acceleration. 
So we'll just move this up a little bit to give ourselves some room. Okay, so to get the magnitude of the acceleration, we're going to want to add these vectors head to tail. So we've got going in the x direction, r omega squared cos omega t. And then in the y direction going down here, we've got r omega squared sine omega t. So our resultant is this one here. To work this out, it's the square root of, we've got r omega squared in both of them. So let's move that out the front. We've got r omega squared, and then we've got cos squared omega t plus sine squared omega t. And just like we argued over here, because omega t is the same in both cases, when we add these two together, we get 1. So this is taking the square root of 1. So this is equal to r omega squared. So what we've got is a is equal to r omega squared. Now, the other way we can write this is because we've got up here, we've got v is equal to r omega, we can replace omega with v on r. So this is equal to r times v on r squared. So one of these r's down here cancels with that one there, and we end up with v squared on r. So this is another very important equation. A is equal to v squared on r. Tells us about the magnitude of the acceleration in circular motion. And we've said the direction is always towards the center of the circle. So we've just seen that v is equal to 2 pi r on t, where t is the period of the motion, v is equal to omega r, and that the centripetal acceleration a is equal to v squared on r. Now I want you to make a prediction. In a second I'm going to start this ball rotating with a certain radius. While you're watching it, I want you to think about what would happen if I decreased the radius? What would happen to the period and what would happen to the speed of the ball. If I decrease the radius to a half, the initial radius, what would be the new period and what would be the new speed of the ball?